the top time management tips to help your business to grow? Well, it's really about the time that your people have and getting your people to maximise the use of their time. That's your objective. And if you think about a business, it is just a collection of people and their time is the number one resource that you've all got. So my first tip, I think, is get everyone to focus on what's important. Importance is how long you spend on things. Your people should be spending the maximum time on whatever's important. And what is important? Well, it's whatever contributes to the vision of the company. So if you've got a really clear vision, you can then make sure that people spend time on contributing to the vision. Anything that doesn't contribute to the direct progress towards that vision is wasted time. And everyone needs to understand both the vision and how we're going to get there. Second thing is everyone should be aware of the value of people's time. Often we don't realise we can waste a few hours uh, chatting or doing something that's not really that helpful or doing something too perfectly when it's not that important. Everyone should feel almost painfully aware of the cost of their time. You know, a meeting where you've got 10 people in there, if you work out the cost of that meeting, it's probably costing you £500 an hour. So people need to know and be told about the value of time and that needs to be constantly uh, reminded. Third one is developing your people by uh, involving them in your decisions and delegating as much as you can to them. Your objective is to build a machine of people that runs the business. You're working on the people, you're working on the business rather than in it, and your objective is to develop this machine of people by coaching the people. And the more you can involve them in what you're doing and give to them, the more they'll grow. The fourth time-related tip for growing your business is to delegate everything that you do. One way or another, you've got to delegate everything. A friend of mine had a motorbike crash and he was out of work for a whole year in hospital. And during that time, I was convinced and he was convinced that his business would fail. They actually had the best year they've ever had. Um, and that's a really interesting lesson because it shows that people will step up if they have to. So he could have done that anyway. He could have delegated those tasks anyway and been there just to make sure that they were okay and help them if necessary. So have faith in your people and have a plan for how you're going to delegate everything gradually to the people who work for you. Number five is that everything should be owned by one person and every person should own something. Even something really small like who waters the rubber plant in reception, that should be owned by somebody. So if it isn't done, we know who should have done that. So everything should be owned and not owned by two or three people. Everything should be owned by one person. And similarly, everybody should have something that's theirs. Hopefully they'll have more than just watering the rubber plant in reception. But they should have something that's theirs that they own because that's important for motivation. Tip number six is that all information should be shared in some sort of central system. You shouldn't have people writing stuff on post-it notes and scraps of paper or little books. Everything should go onto a central system. Every phone number, every contact with a customer, every job that's needing to be done, everything should be shared. Because if you have individual people with bits of paper, then stuff will fall through the cracks, you'll have overlaps between people, it all gets messy. So everything needs to be centralised in some way. Tip number seven of my ten is that everybody should keep their promises and we should all agree as a team that if we do something, if we promise we'll do something, that we'll do it. Um, and this is a team agreement but also I think it's part of induction. So when you join the company it should be explained. There are some basic rules like not stealing and not fighting but also keeping promises. It absolutely should be up there as a rule. If you say you'll do something, you must do it. And we all agree that as a team. Wouldn't life be simple if everybody always did what they said they were going to do? Tip number eight of ten is to avoid interruptions by having some sort of signalling system where you can say, please don't disturb me, I'm in the middle of something difficult. And it might be just that you um, have some sort of mascot like a dinosaur or something that you put on top of your computer screen to say, don't disturb me, I'm in the middle of thinking. But if you all agree to do that in an open plan office, it means that you can work when you don't need to be disturbed. Obviously, people mustn't abuse that and leave the dinosaur on there all day. But it does mean if you need an hour to really think that you've got a way to signal that to your colleagues. Again, it's a team effort. 
Number nine out of ten is that if there's a problem, rather than just fixing it, you should ask why did it happen and fix the root cause. Even if you have to ask why several times, you know, why did it go wrong, the information was wrong on the computer. Well, why was the information wrong on the computer? Well, it's nobody's job to update it. You know, why is it nobody's job to update it? So you need to burrow down to get to the root cause and fix it. There's really no excuse for problems repeating because they should be nailed after the first time they crop up. And then my tenth suggestion is that everything routine should have a system. So set up systems for routine tasks. So if you keep getting the same inquiry or the same problem or whatever, set up a system so you can either automate it or delegate it to somebody cheaper than you. So there should be no routine tasks being done regularly by you. So there we are. Those are my top ten suggestions.